Hi, this is Yvette. Thanks so much for joining me today for this watercolor painting tutorial. Today's video I will share with you all how to paint a daisy flower, how to paint this background using salt and stencils, and how to correct a mistake. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to be using is my arch watercolor paper that I have set here. I'm going to put aside my original and I'm going to be sharing with you guys the painting and the brushes. These are my paints and the picture. So the paints that I'm going to be using in the background is going to be my Hawker's Green, my Ultramarine Blue, my Indigo Blue, my Permanent Green. Then for the uh, flower, the center of the flower, I'm going to be using this uh, Queen Acrodont, my Cadmium Yellow, my Burn Amber. And I have my salt, table salt here. And I'm going to be using my white mask. I have my HB mechanical pencil, my eraser, my little brush, and my soap to protect my little brush. For the brushes, I'm going to be using a round, brush number 12, a, a round number two, and just in case if we need it, I have this number round number four. So uh, let's start by uh, sketching the flower. Hi Chris, how are you? Thank you for coming. If you're my patron, the outline is ready for you in Patreon Home. You just need to be printed in a regular paper or even in a watercolor paper and trace it into your uh, watercolor paper, okay? I have here my watercolor paper and I'm going to be just taping it just around with this type of beautiful tape, washi tape. Because I want to have a nice white frame all around. Try to make halfway into the paper and halfway outside the paper. Hi, Barbara. Oh. Okay, I have to use the blue tape because the washi tape is gone. But we have the blue tape here halfway and halfway so if you want to trace your own flower that's good for me if you want to follow my direction that's good for me as well so let's start I'm going to put in front of me the picture Okay, so this is my whole page and I have a, a new uh, camera that maybe will help you to uh, see better what I'm doing. Okay, so this is my whole page. What I'm going to be doing is to find the complete area where all my flower is going to be. So I'm going to trace a big, I want to say oval or circle, semicircle, oval. That is going to be my whole flower, including all the petals, right? So then I want to look for the center part of my flower where the pistils are. This is very important because whatever you decide the flower is going to be facing is where you need to trace this part, okay? So now I want to see how many petals you want to be adding. So in the in my original picture, 
I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, this behind 14, 15, 16, 17, and the stem, okay? So first I'm going to find my stem. And the tip of the stem where it's touching the pistols need to be thin, but going far into the corner need to be like bigger, okay? Okay, I have my stem. And now I'm going to start tracing my petals. Something that I recommend you for you to do is we're going to do a 17, right? So start by just adding some lines first, just to find the direction of the petal. And then trace your petal. Okay, so I'm going to be tracing all the petals. one by one the shape of a petal is the same it can be even the shape of a leaf and some petals are in front and some petals are back so we need to do this because we want to have movement into the design Like for instance, this one is inside, so we cannot even see it because it's behind, no inside behind. Then we have another one here. And let's keep moving. This part, need, the petals need to be like smaller, and this part, the petals need to be large, okay, or bigger. We have another here behind that we cannot see the complete area. But let's keep moving. Sometimes when we see the complete picture, it's a little overwhelmed to do a freehand, but by separating the picture, like the way I'm doing it one by one and do not see the rest is less stressful for me I don't know you guys okay thank you so much for sharing this video into Facebook groups here we have another one that is going this way. And always the petals, the bottom part where it is attached to the pistols is thin and then it's going to start opening, opening and then the tip go close again. Here we have a big one going up. Then here we have a little one, something like this. And a tiny one 
here as well. We have even a space to add one more petal. That's nice. Okay, and I'm going to add another one here. And if you notice, the way I'm drawing, my drawing is doing a little strokes. Sometimes uh, it's better just to do a little strokes because you have a chance to go back and revisit the lines. So all these parts need to be irregular. It's not a solid line. Okay, something like this, okay? And now what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be erasing the extra lines that I am not going to be using it before I start adding my white mask, okay? So you can use your regular eraser or you can use the nail eraser that I have been working with. And to be honest with you guys, I, I am enjoying it, this guy. First you need to um, like move it, get it soft. I'm going to raise first the outside circle because we don't need it anymore, right? Remember the pencil that stay in the paper as we're going to be using in the top uh, watercolor is going to stay. So that's why it's better to erase as much as you can the lines of your pencil. Okay, so now is the volume okay, guys? to soft my lines when you will be doing this try to soft the lines as much as you can to be able until you can just see barely the, the lines you can see it now because I'm not like a, a erasing it so much but when you will be doing this it's better to really make it super soft these lines Okay, I think I have my sketch ready and now I'm going to be using my white mask. So remember, do not shake it. Don't do it like this. You need to do this because you don't want to have bubbles. The bubbles will pop up and then the paint is going to go inside the area and you're going to have colors. That you were not like expecting or looking for just do it like this oh thank you barbara so now you need to wet your brush and remember uh, to protect the brush that you use with the white mask because it's a very strong product okay and now i'm going to apply the white mask all around the, in, uh, the outline, you can use the outline or you can uh, cover the whole flower, okay? So we're going to be covering the whole flower.
Okay, I'm back and look like the white mask is dry. Okay, I hope we don't have holes, but we can start painting our background. Okay, so for the background, I'm going to uh, use uh, my permanent green that I have here. Then I'm going to be using um, my hawker's green that is here. I'm going to add a little more. I like to apply in the corner of right or left side new paint because like that I can be controlling more the amount of pigment that I am using. Then I have here my ultramarine. I have enough. And here I have my indigo blue that I have enough. Okay. So we can even uh, play a little bit with our uh, nickel quinacridone so that I have it here. Okay, so I'm going to be using my big brush, this 12. And at first I wanna be sure that I don't have, that my brush is clean. That happened, this kind of accidents happen a lot. Lot of flowers, that's me, Jenny. Oh, Daisy. Oh, that's so, so sad. Yeah, same for me. I have a bunch of plants that are dead. I have the wheat milk for the butterflies, all gone. Okay, so now let me just move my water close to me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wet everything with clean water. I'm gonna be sure that with the heat the tape is okay. Yeah. So wet everything. And it's very important that you wet in between the petals because here is where we're going to be adding the darker color. That's why it's good to use a good uh, watercolor paper because uh, the wet part stay longer. I was playing with the regular, um, you know, the cards for my mom, and it gets dry so fast that I need to be blending everything super fast, and I didn't enjoy that. Okay, so now I'm going to start by applying. I'm going to add some water into my paint. Okay, so I'm going to start by applying the light green. And also uh, the Beridian, sorry. We're going to be using Beridian. Beridian green give us a very like nice and beautiful green. Let me show you. See? So I'm not afraid to add color and you don't need to be afraid as well. I'm going to clean my brush because I wanna grab a little bit of the orange. And now I want to grab my ultramarine blue and I'm going to add the ultramarine blue inside in between the petals. And I want to add as well here. See all these beautiful colors? More of my viridian. And remember, we're going to lose so much the intensity of the paint that I'm not worried that, oh, it's too much. No, I'm not, okay? I'm going to clean and I'm gonna grab a little bit of my indigo, blue indigo, and I'm going to apply 
in this part mm -hmm. so now we're going to be moving the paper and it's something that I always enjoy Here we can see that we don't have water, so that's why sometimes it's good just to move the paper because you can tell where you were missing. Like for instance here. I can see it start like drying so before it get drying what I'm going to do two things I'm going to grab first my small brush okay I'm going to wet it and I'm going to grab my darker green that is my hawker green because I want to see and I want to do some like strokes like this that is going to be part of the grass Okay. And then we can even grab with the same brush more of my orange. And I want to grab and add some like you know some um splashes of this color. And then it's time to add the salt. You can add all around or just in some areas. Whatever you feel like, uh, I want to do it. Okay? Something that I that I noticed is that it, the effect of the salt, salt look, looks much better in the darker backgrounds. Okay? So this is the background and now we need to wait this to get dry. The area where the salt touch the paper will be lighter in color. The salt will push the watercolor pigment away and thus the lighter spot will be surrounded by a darker shade. How is the difference between this one that I left really even 24 hours I, I remember now? And the texture, I can see more detail, the little grains, and this one that we, we push the, the time. So when the salt is dry, you need to start like moving it with your finger and clean everything. Can you hear me now? this this part and another tip with the salt you need to add the salt not when the paper is wet you need to add the salt when the paper is damp and let me show you in this this page I can show you where it was damp and where the um, the paper was wet Okay, let me 
just clean this out. So here, let me show you the difference. Here, the paper was wet. I can see the little texture of the salt and I actually, I like like for to use when I am like, I don't know, painting, I wanna say a, uh, a trunk of a tree or a, a kind of like a fabric. Here, the was damp, the paper. So there is a big difference between this effect and this effect. I like both because you know it's like a surprise for me to see to watch what the salt is going to be doing into my my paper okay I'm glad you have uh, volume so now I'm going to be peeling the white mask Uh, pistols are so the idea first is that we're going to be using yellow my cadmium yellow I'm just be sure that my brush is clean so I'm working dry paper with wet brush the first part and now I want to grab a little bit of my Crinocodon let me say better Quinacridon gold and I want to add in the bottom first and I'm going to give some little dots in this part and here I think it's good for you to see this part okay I'm going to grab again because uh, we need to start like a working the volume and the flower so in this part I'm using very like a little bit of the same paint just a little bit okay now I want to grab a little bit of my brown that is my amber that I have here and we're going to see if it's enough let me read to you so that's funny I must know that game but 
to be honest with you, I maybe in Spanish they, it has another name. So I'm adding in this part the amber, the burnt amber. And just a little nothing, very soft and gentle in this part, okay? I'm gonna grab a little bit of my indigo. The indigo is very strong color, it's like same as black. With a little bit you can have a lot. So I'm going to tap a little bit here with the indigo. wash my brush and I want to grab a little bit of my hawker screen with a lot of water to make it this like transparent hawker screen because I want to start adding this color here and there now I want to grab more of the same green with a little less water and I want to grab and add some dots in this part first I'm going to clean my brush just I am tapping tapping with this green okay I'm gonna grab a little bit of the indigo blue with the hopper screen and I'm gonna in this part. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I wanna dry this to start painting the petals. Lightly damp the area carefully with a damp brush. Remove the paint with either a brush or a sheet of the kitchen roll. Clean the brush constantly to remove the paint.
Okay, so now I'm going to be correcting this area. I'm going to use a little bit first of my prenocodon to go around. to be able to see it. I'm just moving this paint because I want to um you guys to be able to see those two petals. Okay? And we can even uh, work later those petals. Okay so now that it's dry everything I'm going to start working the shadows of the petals. So the first thing I wanna do is to prepare my light blue that I have here, my cerulean blue, another color. And with a lot of water, I'm going to start by adding shadows. So the shadows are going to be, let's start with this big, big petal, so that you guys can see better the first step of the shadows. So I'm going to uh, start in the bottom part and going down. Then I want to leave a white frame, white line in the middle. And add some shadows here and there, like this. Okay, this camera. Okay, so next, the bottom, and I'm going to leave some areas in white, and the most important is the middle line. here in the bottom this one so let's first paint the one who is in the top and then we're going to come back to this one and I'm going to leave an empty white line in the middle Very soft and gentle. And then we can even decide if we need to come back and add more color, but this is the first layer. First I want to paint this and then let me see which one is 
This one is like this. The one who is behind, we're going to add more color. And here we're going to be correcting the color, the background. We're going to be cleaning the piece. And if you notice, it's super light, the blue, because we want to go very slow and gentle. We don't want to overcolor the piece. Let me grab more, more white, more water, and more light blue. Okay. So while this is drying, what I'm going to do is to go and grab a little bit of my indigo blue and I'm going to be working dry paper with wet because I want to be blending a little bit this color see how different it's like just by adding this color the petals pop up What I'm doing with the water is I'm blending the color and we have all this texture so I'm not worried that we're going to have like a broccoli effect. you add into the border of the color more you can blend the color and to correct this line so by doing this then I can come back add water and just move the paint and here this petal this part of the petal was uh, wet so I just need to be careful come back later and correct this part okay 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, grab a little bit of my ultramarine blue because I want to uh, paint the ones who are behind the background. So like this. I want to have different color and this one. And let's see which one also we can work this background. Okay, so shadows here. And I'm going to be blending it. And let's see where else. Shadow here. very soft like look where the shadows can be like this petal is giving shadow to the one who's in the bottom or vice versa so. and blend it with the water okay again maybe here we have a little shadow Just like looking which which petal need to be darker than the other one. And back and forth with my indigo blue. to not mix it to colors because it's wet this part okay so while we're waiting this to get dry I want to grab my um, amber burn amber water and I'm going to add this first into all the stem and then I want to grab again more burnt amber A little bit of the blue indigo to my amber. And I'm adding a little bit 
again in my right side with the tip of my brush. By doing this, I'm allowing the watercolor to move. Okay. You can even clean your brush and with the tip. Just revisit a little bit the left. Then you can add some lines like this. Watercolor is going to move and it's going to find its own way, but as we wet half way, we're going to have that soft color. Let me just clean my palette because I don't want to mix the tones. So I want to have a clean area here for my yellow. skip these two because they're together so I want to control better the, the, the color so this one Just to give a kick of color. And if you feel uh, more confident, you can even wet the whole petal. And let me 
dry yeah let me dry this to keep adding yellow to the other and I'm still using my number two careful just wet the petal not the background here I wet a little bit the background so I just need to be careful here with yellow and here as well okay so now I'm going to add a new brush my zero 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 wood that I love to use and I want to go back and grab a little bit of my cerulean blue but um, this time with less water and what I'm going to do is to add a little line oh, let me just dry this okay, let's prepare again the blue Cerulean blue with my little little tiny brush and I'm going to add in the middle line in the middle I'm going to add a line besides the darker color that we use and you can add Some extra lines, soft and gentle again.
so time to revisit it again. This part I want to add a little more of my green, my hawker's green. So I'm going to be working on dry paper with wet. So I'm just adding some dots to create more texture. I add water uh, into the pistols. And you want to left some areas with no paint, but also you want to add some areas paint. Okay, so this part I can even go back to grab my amber that it has a little bit of my indigo blue. Ah, muchas gracias, Rita. Gracias por venir. And I'm going to add some dots in the bottom to give more uh, volume into this part of the flower. Clean my brush, take out the scent of the water, just move So the next step that I want to be uh, working is I want to add some circles like bokeh effect to uh, make it more soft the background and for that I'm going to be using my stencil I have here and I'm going to be using a square brush, flat brush, let me show you the brush, this brush a clean napkin. I have it here. Yeah, the blue make everything like pop up, right? Going to clean my brush first just to be sure that it doesn't have paint. And I'm going to like I'm going to be using this circle okay so uh, I'm going to like in between these two colors okay this. Mm -hmm. so wet your brush and start moving the color swapping the color create some circles and I decide that because here we don't wanna we don't see the a lot the effect of the salt so I wanna add some bokeh effect important to clean your brush because uh, the paint is in the brush clean or you can mix a color for here already in the paper and make another tone of circle okay
just want to be careful to clean my brush each time and swap the color coming guys small one I want something small here I love to do this technique because it's like you're building something and then when I start like uh, overlapping the, the circles it looks so good you can clean too much or you can just clean a little bit circles you can like play with the tones
This move here. And almost, almost there. Just a few more. Checking around. At the end, if you want to add more light to these two little petals, just add a little bit of white. Okay, I'm going to call this painting done for today. Thank you so much for coming guys and see you next time. Bye bye.